From your local election headquarters, this is Big Country Politics on KTAB. Okay, welcome back to Big Country Politics. We have, and we're continuing our conversation with Christina Garcia. She is the anchor, weather person, sports person, producer, reporter for Telemundo Abilene, along with Gina and Ilse, yes. your, your producer. We talked about your career, how you got here. We didn't have enough time to talk about all of that stuff because I still have so many questions. But I want to talk about you recently becoming a U.S. citizen, which is why we have you on the show today. Um, you went away for a few days here in the newsroom, and, and we had a big celebration for you and, and the cake. And, and because you became a, a U.S. citizen, t tell me about where you're from in Mexico, where your family's from. We are from Guanajuato. It's, uh, it's central Mexico, uh, maybe like five hours away from Mexico City. Um, so that's where both of my parents are from there. I was born there, and then we, uh, they brought me to California. Uh, that's where I grew up in California. What, at what age did you come here to the United States? Um, I celebrated my first birthday in the United States. So my parents brought me as a baby. Wow. Yes. Um, and then you went through school, obviously, mm -hmm. uh, decided to go to college because we went over that in the, mm -hmm. in the last segment. At what point did you decide, okay, I'm going to become a U.S. citizen? Well, after I got my citizen, I mean my uh, U.S. my resident card, I became a you know I was able to now get a job and everything that came with that. I always wanted to become a citizen, but it wasn't that much of an urgency for me. I guess when I was a teenager when when that happened, so I didn't see it as I need to do it right now. Uh, and then you know there was fees, and you know I just didn't really have the money for that so I just waited and then I went to school and then my priority then was school paying for school working I worked a full-time job and I went to school part-time so it took me nine years to get my degree it took me a very very long time but I was able to do it so after I graduated that's when I decided okay I need to save up for for the citizenship because it does have a cost it's not just um, I want to do it you have to pay a fee uh, right now it's about seven hundred dollars you know it's, it's not um, a lot, a lot of money, but you know, for someone that's going to school. For someone, yeah, yeah that is a to, lot of money. Yeah, that was a lot of money, so I just kind of put that to the side, and then, you know, with just so many things changing as far as laws, I was, you know, kind of scared. What if, like, they decide to tell permanent residents, you, you have to go, or, or, you know, I don't know what's going to happen, so that then it became more of a, like, an urgency for me. Well, we were talking yesterday, and your parents were kind of the beneficiaries of a, of a program back when Ronald Reagan, Reagan yes. w was in office, mm -hmm. and and that's how they were able to stay in the U.S. Tell right. us, tell me about that. That happened in 1986. So it was like the, this amnesty that a lot of people were that were already here in the U.S. were able to to apply and just become permanent residents. So millions of people were able to benefit, and my parents. I'm so happy that they took advantage and they, they did the process. And then with that, once they became permanent residents, they applied for me. And once they did that for me, it took 10 year, over 10 years for, for the process for me to finally get my, my green card. Wow. Okay. I mean, it, it's not only a money thing as far as the process goes. It's a, it's it's a, a time, time thing. Exactly. And that's what a lot of people sometimes don't understand that it, it does take time, not just money. A lot of people will gladly pay the money, but it's just the time or, or just being able to qualify for one of the legal ways to be able to become a permanent resident of this country. I mean, there's just, it's not that easy. And you went through the entire process and now uh, you are a citizen. What would you, I've got a couple of questions like this for mm -hmm. you. What would you tell somebody dreamers mm -hmm. out there who, who 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 are dreaming of what you have done exactly what would you tell them uh, I mean because they're watching the laws too they're watching TV and they're watching all of this stuff happen is it easy to get discouraged I mean it's just right now we don't know what's going to happen especially with you know the whole the DACA mm -hmm. um, and I feel like they're just like me but they came after me you know I could have been one of them too but you know we just we just gotta hope and you know and there's i mean there's a lot of people doing things out there to try to bring you know awareness of as to what's going on and bring change but you know i just hope that you know they're just as american as 
as I am or as anyone else living here because a lot of them have been living here all their lives. This is all they, they know. So I just hope that they can become or, or, or get that path to citizenship. And I hope that they don't lose hope because you know th there's just so many people here in that situation. They just need a paper to prove it, that they're American. That's it. Because you felt American without the documentation. Yes, I mean, this has been my home all my life, so yes. And I love, I love this country. I mean, the opportunities that it's given my family, my, my siblings, my siblings also went to university, wow. and my sister's an RN in Dallas, my brother, say, um, he's doing finance, so we, we were the first to go to school here in the United States of my family. So we were, my parents are, you know, can, you can imagine, they're really happy about that, and, and that's why they, they brought us here. To be to make a difference and be someone, and here we are. Christina, what what was it like when you were at that ceremony, and it happened? It was, you know, it was a small ceremony that day. Um, they let me do it the same day that I actually uh, took my test, and so it was maybe like six people there. And I remember when I was waiting to be called, this guy comes out, and he he just goes like, "Thank God." You know, he's just like oh, so happy wow. that he just yeah. passed his test. And I saw that and I was just like, oh my, I just, it brings so much joy. And, you know, we, you know, we did our ceremony and they told us that we have to leave our green card there. And it just kind of felt like, are you sure? Like, are you sure I can leave that there? I just felt like that's it. You know, it, it wasn't, it wasn't extremely hard or anything. Of course, they ask you questions about the history. It's, I feel like anyone can do it. Um, if you, you know, you dedicate yourself to, to making sure you're prepared, but I mean, it's just incredible. It's just like, finally, you know, finally I did it. So I'm very happy. W one more thing I want to ask you, and this is a question directly from Sam Nichols, our weather guy, he's <laughs> sitting over there listening to our conversation. He wanted to ask you, what would you tell other women? Because I think you're not only a role model uh, for others in your position coming from Mexico and trying to go to school and become a U.S. citizen, but I think you're a role model for, for women. Mm -hmm. What would you tell people in your position, other women in your position? I mean, I think sometimes we get lost after high school maybe. We don't, you don't know what you want to do with, with your life. You don't know which path to follow. And if you feel like you want a career or you want an education, just just do it. It's so, I thought it was going to be the hardest thing ever, and it was hard, but it wasn't impossible, and, and I did it. I, like, I remember my first day of college, I thought it was going to be stadium seating, and there was going to be a professor writing this like huge you know, equation, and I wasn't going to know what he was talking about, and I thought I was just going to fail or whatever, but it, it, it's, 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 an, it's something that you can do, and, and you should definitely go for it, even if it takes you nine years. Just go little by little, eventually, the time's going to pass, eventually you will finish it, and then it'll take you places that you just never thought. You will meet people that you never thought you would meet, and, and you, you know, the possibilities are endless after that. Awesome. So, Christina, congratulations. Thank you so much. You can watch Christina Garcia on Telemundo Abilene every weekday. Yes. All right, Thank we'll you. be back on Big Country Politics.